Hey guys, so welcome to the first lecture for ratios and proportions. So, let's have a look at the very first question. It says, the authors of a book are going to share the royalties in proportion to the number of chapters they have each written. Charlie wrote four chapters, Brad wrote three, and Nigel wrote five. If they need to share $24,000, how much will they each get? Okay, so let's first write out the most important parts of the information. So we have Charlie at 4, Brad at 3, and we have Nigel at 5. So if you were to look at this as a ratio, we would have 4 to 3 to 5, which is C for this, B for this, and N for this. So that is the total number of, um, you know, that's, that's the ratio, I guess, in terms of the chapters that were written. So if you were to look at it as the total number of chapters that were written, so total chapters is 4 from Charlie, 3 from Brad, and 5 from Nigel. So they actually wrote 12 chapters altogether. So, if we were to do ratios now, so Charlie wrote 4 out of the 12 um, chapters. So, 4 twelfths of the $24,000 is how much he should be getting paid. So, 4 over 12 times 24000 now, 12 goes into 12 once, 12 goes into 24 two times, and then 4 times 2,000 gives us $8,000. Okay, then we are looking at Brad. Now, Brad wrote 3 out of the 12, so 3 out of 12 of $24,000. So we have 3 over 12 times 24,000. So 12 goes into 12 once, 12 goes into 24 twice. 3 times 2,000 is $6,000. So 8,000 and 6,000 gives us 14,000. That leaves us with Nigel. Now with Nigel, we can work it out in two different ways. One way is to just do the ratio that we just did for Charlie and Brad. Or, because we know the total amount that needs to be shared is $24,000, and we've already figured out how much Charlie and Brad will get, all we have to do is a takeaway. But, let's be consistent and work out what Nigel should get. So Nigel, in terms of its ratios, are um, 5 over 12 of $24,000, which is 5 over 12 times 24,000. 12 and 24 is 2. 5 times 2 is $10,000. So if they were to share the money, Charlie would get $8,000, Brad would get $6,000, and Nigel would get $10,000. Perfect. Let's move to the next question. Okay. So this particular question says, the time that it takes to travel along a hike varies directly with the length of the track. Now, if it takes four, kilometer, four hours to travel 10 kilometers, how long will it take to do a six-kilometer trail? Okay. Let's just quickly assign some letters here. So let's say the kilometers can be um, K, and hours can be T. So T can be hours. Okay, so as it's just said, the time it takes to um, travel along a hike directly um, is in proportion to the um, trail. So we have the time which is proportional to the distance. And as we know, the constant of proportionality creeps up once we get rid of the uh, proportionality sign. So T is equal to, let's call it C, K, where C is the constant there. Now, we've already been told that the time is 4 hours when the kilometers is 10. So C times 10. Therefore, C is equal to 4 divided by 10, which is 0 0.4. So our formula here is simply T is equal to 0 0.4. K. Now we know that K is 6.6 6 kilometers for the second part. So T is equal to 0 0.4 times 6, which gives us 2.4 kilometers. Therefore, how long will it take to do a 6 kilometer trail? Sorry, that shouldn't be kilometers, that should be hours. Therefore, it should take. 2.4 hours. Excellent.
let's move to the next question now. Okay, so this particular question says, a weighing device is made up of a spring with a hook on one end where the object being weighed is hung. If the amount the spring extends is proportional to the amount of weight it is holding and the spring extends 2 centimeters for a 4 kilogram weight, then what is the constant of proportionality? B. If the spring extends 4 centimeters, how heavy is the mass? If it is holding 10 kilograms mass, how far will the spring extend? Excellent. Let's have a look at this now. So we have A. Now, let's call the distance um, D. So that can be distance. And then the weight can be W. So what it is saying is that the amount the spring extends is proportional to the amount of weight. So the distance that it extends is proportional to the actual weight. So D is in equals the constant of proportionality multiplied by the weight. Okay, now it has already told us that the distance is 2 centimeters when the weight is 4. So 2 is equal to C times 4. Therefore, C is equal to 2 over 4, which gives us 0 0.5. So, using a different color, what is the constant of proportionality? That would be 0 0.5. Okay, now the second part of the question says, if the spring extends 4 centimeters, how heavy is the mass? So, let me write out the formula now. So, we have D is equal to 0 0.5. W. So that formula now, guys, will tell us exactly, we can basically work out anything from here because we have the general formula that sits behind or that describes this particular situation. What this is basically telling me is that the distance is always half that of the weight. Okay, so if the spring extends 4 centimeters, how heavy is the mass? All we have to do is simply replace D with 4. So 4 equals 0.5 W. Therefore, W is equal to 4 divided by 0 0.5, which gives us 8 kilograms. So how heavy is the mass? The mass is 8 kilograms. Okay, now moving to part C. If it is holding 10, kilo, uh, 10 kilograms mass, how far will the spring extend? So again, we have D equals 0 0.5 W. So D is equal to 0 0.5 times the 10 kilogram mass. So 0 0.5 times 10 gives us 5 centimeters. Okay, so putting that through. So how far will the spring extend? It will extend 5 centimeters. Alrighty, now let's move to the next question. Okay, so this question says the amount that it costs to ride in a yacht is inversely proportional to the number of people in the yacht. If it costs $400 when 30 people are traveling, what is the constant of proportionality? So very similar type of question, guys. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video at this stage and have a go at this particular question on your own. It'll help you get an understanding of the constant of proportionality, which I hope you've already covered in school. Uh, and it'll help you answer this question. So we'll come back to it in a uh, minute or so. Alrighty. So, once again, let's write out what they've given us. So the amount that it costs to ride in a yacht, so the cost is inversely proportional to the number of people. So the cost can be C, and the number of people can be P. So to write this out, we have C is equal to uh, let's call the constant of proportionality K in this case, because I've already used up C for cost, um, over P. Excellent. So now using the numbers we've been given, it costs $400 per person when 30 people are traveling. So $400 equals M, oh sorry, let's call it K over 30. Therefore, K is equal to 400 times 30, which gives me 12,000. So the constant of proportionality is a whopping 12,000. Okay, so if it says, what is the cost per person if there are 50 people? Okay, B. So now our um, formula 
is cost is equal to 12,000 divided by P. Now, if there are 50 people, the cost would be 12,000 divided by 50. Zeros get cancelled out. 1,200 divided by 5 gives us $240. Therefore, what is the cost per person if there are 50 people? That would be $240. Okay, now the question says, flipping it around, we have what is, so if the cost is $250 per person, how many people are on the yacht? So we have C is equal to 12,000 over P again. Now the cost is $250, which is equal to 12,000 over P. Therefore, P is equal to 12,000 over 250. Zero get cancelled out, and we get a value of 48. So, if the cost is $250 per person, how many people are in the yacht? That would be a total of 48 people. So, guys, that brings us to the end of the first uh, lecture for ratios and proportions. I really hope that was helpful. We covered a fair few questions um, that delved into the concept of proportionality, and we even covered a question around the inverse proportionality. So, again, I hope it was helpful. Make sure you have a go at the worksheets, and I will see you in the second lecture for ratios and proportions. Thanks, guys.